I'm going to call the meeting to order. Roll call. Gary Mertig here. Rick Corpola here. Michael Berlin here. William Metzinger here. Martin Vitek. Yep. All present. Uh, we need a motion to approve the amended agenda. Motion. I second it. Amber, you got the first and second. Yes. Okay. Any questions or changes? All those in favor of amending the agenda say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> Minutes of July 20th. I'll make a motion that we adopt them. Motion by Bill. Second. Second by Marty. Question, correction. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Public comment. So we might have one one public comment. We gotta get get them unmuted. Okay. You go up on this on the side. Yeah. Okay. 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 Is there a public that would like to speak? Yes, Dave Setterholm asked to speak to us today, so okay. he should be on the line. Dave, is that you? Who's no, this is, uh, this is Dick Pufal. I'm on the line. Oh, hi. Hi, Dick. Hi, Dick. Okay, so, so Dave has not called in or? Okay, well, if he does, we'll try and get him in. Okay. Yeah, he just called me like a half an hour ago and um, okay. was going to call in, so he might be having problems. Um, maybe I'll turn that app on just in case you need Okay, so we'll just we'll come back to public comment if there's no one else if uh, needed. So, commissioner reports. All right. Uh, as I told you before, Bob Tomlinson turned in his retirement. His retirement date is what September tenth. His actual last day of work will be August twenty seventh. He's got a couple weeks of vacation. He's going to use up at the end. So we did advertise um, for that position. We had three applications. They were all from within the department. No, no outside applications, which I was kind of surprised. We, we put it out in the paper in some different places, um, sent it to all the other counties, WCHA, all that. So we interviewed the three employees from within. Um, we chose uh, Bob Diff as our new shop superintendent. He will be good man. Yeah, he, he'll do a good job. Yeah. He will be starting the position on well the 29th, which is a Saturday. Will be will be a new, new pay period. He'll start into that position. So that's a update there. So that leaves a, a position open now in the crew, which we will be advertising this week, looking to, to fill that position. So we need a good man there because. He plows the town of Jingles. He plows Jingles. <laughs> yeah, we have two guys up in Ashland that they haven't told me yet if they're interested in Jingles. Um, we'll see what how that all shakes out. But other than that, I don't have anything on employees. Uh, work schedule. We've been um, working on GG quite a bit, digging rocks out of the highway. There's a, a lot of bumps. And we've been digging them out and pulling out the big boulders, getting ready for the pavement project next year uh we've been working now for <clears throat> a little over two weeks i think for the forestry department county forestry they had a they got a fifty thousand dollar grant to improve some of the roads in the county forest so we did a project on forest road nine uh we had added some cross culverts up a hill from the creek that washed out every rainstorm into the creek added some cross culverts did some ditching that's, where where is nine? Nine is out. If you go out past Augustine Lake, it's almost at Iron County border, and then it goes south off of Mercer Road, I think. There. It's a. Uh, it, yeah. It's a yeah. I I had some someone call me the other oh maybe two weeks ago, and said that you know this money that the county got from Enbridge, that they hope they didn't put it on the roads, <laughs> on on the county roads. And I said, well, if, if they don't, if they don't use the money on the county road, 
it's going to have to come out of the general fund. Yeah. So what's the difference, you know? Yeah. Well, she says, I'm just telling you that I don't, I don't want anything with Enbridge or like the town roads or the county roads. And I just sure. said, well, it's not up to me to decide, but if, if the county needs the money, they got to get it from someplace, you know? So yep. anyhow, I just thanked her and thanks sure. for calling, but I just thought I'd mention that. Yep. So also for forestry, we put a culvert in on east side uh, fire lane, put a cross culvert in there where the water came over the road at many times. Um, we worked on Silver Creek Road, right from Silver Creek up the hill there, kind of the same as Forest Road 9. We added three cross culverts and did some ditching, trying to alleviate that washout problem every time it rained down the hill. I think we have about $12,000 left of that 50. We are going to go to Masterson Fire Lane this week and, and do some, some work on the hill there also. So that would be a big improvement. Uh, down south there, two weeks ago, they got, I don't know, I, I heard reports from six inches to eight inches of rain in the Butternut area. So county highways fared very well. We had water over the road in probably a half a dozen places or so. Overall, you know, some minor shoulder damage. Town of Agenda had, had some roads out. We did work for them. We put some culverts in North Road for them, two different places, put some work. Um, they did some other other smaller ones themselves. Uh, that's the basics of what we've been up to. Um, coming up, we're going to continue on GG digging the rocks out. Um, I did get a bid for County H, that shoreline work out there that needs to be done from um, Nelson Construction. It's just under 80000 for him to place 600 yards of riprap. Um, which I think I think we should move forward with. We need to get that shored up so we can stabilize them, the banks along the highway. Um, that's that's it for work schedule. Any questions on that? Did you get any other bids besides that eighty thousand for Nelson? I did not. No, that's I I really didn't expect any. That's pretty specialized. Working, I mean, he's the only one local really set up to do that sort of thing. We wanted it done from the lakeside as we had talked here before, so we didn't wreck all the slopes and have to try to get them revegetated. So that cut out a lot of others that could have done it possibly. How, how are you doing on your budget? We are doing well. Yeah, we're we're doing good. Yet, yeah. yep. We will get into budget talks here later down. Um, but yeah, as of this year's budget, uh, we're we're fine, no no issues. So uh, now that we have a bid from Nelson, is it your recommendation that we go with them? Uh, do we have to take action on that? I don't think we have to take action. I I can authorize that. It's part of my budget. So <laughs> just ask. Yeah. I'm yeah. new. Yeah. No, I think we're fine on that. Okay. Good. Okay, as far as uh, construction, um, County Road N, they are supposed to start today, hopefully, uh, to uh, start milling um, and then paving later this week, hopefully, or next week once they get the milling done. So that, that's getting going. Um, that's basically the only real construction project we have. I can give you an update on Highway 13 south of Mellon. Um, that project was under detour for about four weeks. It is now open and they have a lot of flaggers. They're still doing culverts. Uh, we did run into an issue. They were using uh, County Highway GG from Mellon to Clam Lake for a detour route. We did have an issue, a bridge over McCarthy Creek. Our, we get bridge inspections every two years. Our bridge inspectors came in and there was two broken girders on that bridge, right? One wheel pad. Ooh, that's not good. No, it's not good. But we, we, we got a little lucky whether, when or what the damage happened, that's hard to say. Being that it was a detour out at this time for the state highway, the state brought their engineers up. 
they recommended a 20 ton posting, which we did immediately. They brought their engineers in and they are supposed to be fixing that bridge, replacing them girders either this week or next week at their cost. So it, it worked out well. Because it was a detour? Because it was a detour, it was basically their road at the time the damage was found. So yeah, yeah they will they will be covering that cost. So it, it should be as good or better than it was. The, the girders, it's an old wooden bridge, which it's getting close to needing replacement. It, it hasn't hit the level for um, it's called the sufficiency rating yet, but um, they, they brought their, their wood tester up and it was, the section loss is, is quite high. I mean, it, it's, it's pretty rotten, the bridge. So, so yeah, um, that's basically that. If, sure. if that's on, if a bridge is on the county land, then it's the county's responsibility to replace it. If, if the bridge is on the county highway, Yes. It's the county's responsibility to fix it. Yes. Yep. Yep. It would be our our bridge. Yes. And, and what happened during this construction period is even though there were not supposed to be trucks on there, yeah. there were, I met a lot of trucks. There was a lot of trucks they, on there. They were just ignoring the go around. Yeah, they were. So I I would suspect actually that that bridge broke. The state came in and, and a few of the rougher patches, they put some asphalt on them. I think it broke during that process when the paver and that truck were sitting on that bridge to put that, because they put a new asphalt patch on that section. That's my thought when it would have broke, because it was fresh break. You could see it was fresh wood, but sure. Do they have to close the PP down to be able to fix that? Like you need to keep one lane open? Uh, it will be one lane open, flagger, flagger operation at that time. How long does it take them normally if they don't find anything else on it? I, they're saying two days. Oh. And, yeah. and that in your discussions in the future with the state, mm -hmm. over the weekend, the Bad River Bridge lights were flashing red. They should have been turned on like they are today. We, oh, they, they, they were flashing red all day yesterday. I came through it four times. And that is a dangerous situation because Very. somebody started in and then somebody else started and the person in front of me had to back up. I could see that other car. Yeah. They, must, they were pulled too far ahead to see it. And they were like four or five car lengths in when they saw that other car coming and they had to back out. Sure. But they were flashing red all okay. day. If you see that again, give me a call. Okay. I mean, call dispatch somebody to, so they can let us know. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, we, I have, we have the numbers for their traffic control people. That that should not Like be. we say, today now they're working on something. They're yeah. green. But yesterday, both ways, twice, oh. they were flashing red. Well, that, 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 that's not right. Okay. I just, yeah. like I say, you probably talk to them once in a while. Yeah, I know. mean. But we, we do have contact information for that if, if needed. So the okay. sheriff's department should also have the have the information for that contractor. Good, thank you. Is that up good on the I'm done with it. There's no questions. Do, do we want to is this the phone we're waiting for? Mm -hmm. We'll go back to the public comment. Okay. Hey, hey, can you hear us? Can you unmute your phone and do your public comment, Dave? There he is. There he is. He's still, still muted. Hi. Yep, we can hear you now, Dave. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, basically, I'm David Setter. I'm living in Highbridge, Wisconsin, county of county of Ashland, town of Ashland, and I have a, a quick things I would like to present to you. There's a railroad that goes from well, actually, from Highbridge to North York at the present time, and I'd like to be able to utilize that for testing vehicles that would ride on rail and. Uh, eventually sell them to individuals who would use them to, or would use a, a vehicle like that. And I'm just asking that if you would go on record to say that it would be a, a benefit 
if we look at the cost of that part, that's about six million dollars, would be a, a, a low ball, ballpark figure of the assets of that product of that part. You also have a turnout that I that uh, it's a it's a spur or siding, and uh, utilize that. I think that's on your property. It isn't on a railroad property, as I look at the deed part. And then as uh, actually, I would have liked to. Well, I'm working on, on the rail itself to reestablish it. And I was wondering if you have a individual representing at Rhinelander, the, the rail authority, uh, that's a part. And then if we look at, at let's say 18, 19, there was a number 10 uh, a lawsuit that, or a court documentation that took place. That took eight years to adjudicate. And all it was was the district attorney to stand before the your county your officials and explain that it's not a good thing to do. But again, that took eight years. Now we go to 1904, March 28th. That took about four years for the uh, same thing pretty much to happen. And when that happened, that put me in a bad situation where I'm only allowed $50 for attorneys and the paper shall not exceed 50 cents of any, of any paper. Uh, let's see. Well, you were talking about road work. There's a Loma Road that crosses, comes off 13, and on the south side of that, there's a culvert that is keeping water onto the rail grade and destroying that grade. And I would, uh, well, I wouldn't mind going in there and trying to retrofit it or something, but that. I'm not looking for you guys to fix it. I'm asking for the CNN, which I assume has not had, uh, is not intending to continue this because in, in Ashland, they, they pulled out some rail that fed a, a, a feed mill. I, I had a rail car in there of lime, and then eventually they cut the rail in North York and in uh, Silver Creek, High Bridge. But uh, yeah, uh, let me see. Sorry, I'm not uh, too good at this. Well, uh, there are other things too. Uh, the enforcement uh, number that's on there, it's a 7468. Uh, the enforcement, I, there is about fifty five hundred thousand uh, dollars $500,000 that we could apply for to help uh, keep that going, but that's later on down the road. Uh, you're, you're probably not interested in that. That'd be law enforcement. and. I'd have to get to talking to them. Uh, what I'm asking for is that, seeing as there's about 50 some cars going south, trucks going south that wreck the rail on uh, the highway bed, they could be transported onto onto a rail service. But yeah, the CNN at the present time, pardon? Yeah, Dave. Is my time up? Yeah, well, yeah, but here, here's the question, I guess. If, if you're attempting to either use this uh, railroad property or have the railroad do something with it, we have been attempting to get the railroad to do something. That, that railroad is closed from Park Falls North. There is no rail service beyond Park Falls. They have a big flag in the middle of Park Falls. They won't even go into the Flambeau paper yard. They go south of there. But that being said, I think you're, you'll probably have to deal with CNN because there's a, there's a trespassing ordinance on being on your property. And if you want to use your property, I think you have to contact CNN. And, and unfortunately, it's probably in Canada uh, because we've attempted to talk to them. Well, so I had to, so, I so, actually had the CNN, uh, I had, uh, uh, I had to please, the CNN police officer here, and uh, we had some discussion on, on the matter. I showed him the papers of the patent that's uh, issued in, 19, in 18, 1888. There's a patent issued, and I'd be the holder of the patent. But other than that, I was just, from your standpoint, and I'd, I'm not asking you for money, only that you would be uh, conducive for that to open, to have that that uh, rail part open for 
testing of vehicles, maybe the opening of, or the uh, procedure to open the rail from Mellon, uh, hauling freight out of here again. And those are the only things I'm not really asking for money, just the endorsement from used people. And then I, I have already a letter submitted to the Attorney General of Wisconsin, although the, the uh, what I submitted quite wasn't adequate, uh, according to him, or um, developed. So then I went with the started with the 30 years of litigation that took place in Ashland versus the rail itself, and that's railroad versus railway. I'm a railway operator. I would be in a 1904 railway, although going back into 1871, 18, 18, 1817, uh, going back, but that's been litigated in courts, and that's how I am restricted with the attorney, only $50, and paperwork shall not exceed 50 cents. But that's my problem. That isn't that's nobody else's problem. What, what you might do, Thank is, you. I, you know, I would think, and I'm only speaking for myself, I, I'm supportive of the railroad. I'd love to see them make a comeback. I, I doubt that we're going to see this rail line ever come back unless there's a business that could use it. That being said, if you have some kind of a petition or a letter that you're requesting the highway committee to look at and see if whether or not we could support it, if you would send it to the highway department to Matt or Amber, and then we could review it at their next meeting, and then we could make a decision. Because I think everybody in the county supports the railroad, but we're up against a, a multinational company here who refuses to even acknowledge phone calls sometimes. So if you send some, a letter or something with your request to us, we will review it at the next meeting and see if there's something we can do to publicly support you. Because I, I think the vast majority of people in the county want the railroad, but in all honesty, I don't see it coming back unless we have a business up here that can ship multiple cars. But we will certainly look at it. So Again, yeah, I'll, I'll send that in. Again, if you want multiple cars like uh, uh, a large uh, um, uh, crane loads, that probably wouldn't be the way to go. You lose things. Actually, uh, the uh, there are six uh, grants to start to apply for that would suit the, the starting of the rail. And uh, if, if we do have an individual that is uh, hired or given money to represent them in Rhinelander, I would like that number uh, individual, you know, to work with them with that person as that goes. The, yeah. And I will send you a letter okay. and I sure appreciate you know, your time. Sure. And uh, thank, thank you for the information. And if you send it to the highway department, either to Matt or Amber or both, we'll get it at our next meeting and we will certainly talk about it. Sure, appreciate it. That's all anybody can do because of the large amount of money that uh, takes. And, uh, and as a CNN goes, they have turned down the proposal at least twice of the uh, reestablishment of, of, of uh, service on the line. I do have an individual that will, will pull a car, has an, uh, has an engine, has an operation, operating line. Instead, he would pull in one tanker load for like LP gas in, in the melon. But I, and I sure appreciate you guys are very busy and I sure thank you for taking the time to at least listen to my project. I know it sounds like a pie in the sky, but it was made by very hard people who had land grant, railroad land grant, uh, land grant well, thank operation. Thank you, Dave, we're gonna move on. Yep, thanks, Dave. Bye. Thanks, Dave. Then, uh, Matt, did you have anything else under five? No. Okay. Nope. Then we will move to six. All right. So we had talked about the ATV uh, ordinance and policy. So we worked on this some uh, with myself and Bruce. Um, I come up with a draft here, and we can go through. We should probably go through the ordinance first, and then the policy. Um, read them through 
if if you agree to them or want any changes at that point, if it gets agreed to today, then it would need to go to well to Clark and then to legal for for them to look it over, and then the ordinance would have to go. You know, you guys would have to vote to move it on to the to the county board for their uh, to look. Uh, Matt, just before we begin, just to throw it out there, is there any reason for the policy? Yes. Instead of just having the ordinance. I yeah, I think so. We have to have a, a process for the highway committee to be able to to look it over. They they had stated last time that they want to be involved still. Well, but ultimately, aren't they? If someone just says that they can be put on the agenda for whatever reason, they're still involved. Yeah. I, I don't know. We can go through it. Um, I I think we need the ordinance and and the policy myself, um, but that's up to the committee. To do. Here's a question before we get too involved. In the past, when I brought these things up to the full county board, full county board said we don't want anything to do with this. Highway committee makes the sure. decision. So that's my question: is whether this even needs to go before the full county board. There is changes to the ordinance, okay. so that that has to get okay. updated. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Thank yep. you. So, if you want to turn to your ordinance page in your packet, um, we can look it over. Uh, basically, um, what it talks about it's an ATV policy or route regulations. Um, Specifies county trunk highways or portions of county trunk highways designated AT reroutes shall be established and approved by the highway committee. The highway committee shall develop policies and procedures for designation of ATV routes, including appropriate criteria for making a designation. Any modification to a designated ATV route shall be approved by the highway committee. A list of approved ATV routes along with a map showing their location shall be kept on file at the highway department. Ashton County Highway Department shall have the authority to close or terminate any ATV route on the county trunk highway system subject to approval by the highway committee. Um, then it goes into some specifications. ATVs shall operate only on the far right side of the roadway. Operation on the grassy inslope, ditches, and other highway right away is prohibited and illegal. Uh, ATVs shall be operated in compliance with all applicable Wisconsin laws, orders, and regulations. Um, they shall not, ATVs shall not be operated on designated routes unless signage in accordance with the 23.33 statute. Um, this is one change. ATV operator shall observe, observe posted roadway speed limits unless other speed limits posted for ATVs. So they would they would follow the whatever for cars and other vehicles that that speed limit. Um, ATVs shall be operated in single file and in an extreme right of the roadway unless making a left turn. Um, person 16 years of age or older must possess a valid driver's license to operate an ATV on a county highway. That one is a little bit. Bruce has a little bit of question on it. Um, this is saying, you know, they have to, to operate an ATV if you're born after a certain date, they have to have an ATV license. But this is saying they have to have a valid driver's license. Um, that could run into a few problems as Bruce brought up. You know, maybe someone doesn't get a driver's license and, but still wants to be able to run an ATV on the road and would, would not let them or, you know, some other reasons. But the other thing it does do is if somebody loses their license to, you know, a DUI or something, they cannot just hop on their four wheeler and still have access to the, to the highway system. It's that one's up to debate. I'm open. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a good example. I wouldn't have thought of it until I saw this. I have a 67 year old sister who has never had a driver's license. Sure. Lives in Bayfield County. She'd be prohibited to run on the road. Yeah. So maybe we need to figure out well, here's the thing, and I'll, re I'll be uh, reviewing I've done on different county ordinances, county ordinances. This is a boilerplate that's within the package that I sent out. 
to the townships. And I've never seen, for the most part, I believe what most jurisdictions want to do like this is to get to people that don't have a valid driver's license. Right. But I've never seen it written an ordinance to say or to reflect that you have to have, you can't have any like impaired driving or your license can't be revoked for that. So that's something that legal, I mean, if you wanted to be able to have somebody that is in a position like that lady, it has to be written differently. And the only way that I can see that is to say that like a valid driver, if you, if your license isn't suspended or revoked for any type of impaired driving, right? And I don't, you know, like I said, I've just never seen it any in any county ordinances a town ordinance written that way. And I don't know if it could pass, you know, once the uh, council looks at it, whether it, it would be a goal or not. So if we could do that, I would be more apt to say that because it precludes a lot of people that are law abiding that just doesn't have a driver's license. We, we're running into where I've seen more and more younger people just not get their driver's license. It's not that they're bad people, they're contributing to society and everything. They just never purchase a driver's license. And it seems to be more common now for whatever reason. But they would be precluded then from this. And we're gonna we're gonna run into a lot of problems just because people are gonna use these roadways to jump in to get to where they gotta go. So and right now the law, just so you guys understand, for the kids between 12 and 15 that have a safety certificate for ATVs are allowed to go on the routes right now as long as they're accompanied by an adult. And that adult, if they don't have a driver's license, you can run into the same type of problems there. Where the, where the kid's not gonna be able to, the adult's not gonna be able to. Um, so you're precluding those people as well, between the 12 and 15 that are legal go on the town roads, but not legal to go on the county roads. Uh, on that, uh, where it says that they must possess a valid driver's license, couldn't we just add, or uh, never had a, uh, a valid license revoked? So that that would cover those that never did have a driver's license. Once again, that goes back to what legal is going to say. Yeah, but I'm just saying that, that would be a place to insert that just so that, you know, we, we could. We, here's the other situation. We have a lot of married couples where one of the spouses never had a driver's license. So they get ATVs because they're going to go from their home now into some town or prison. And one of them is illegal under this if they, so. I'm just wondering how we address that. It, and, it's and, a word the, and the next question with it is, do you guys want 12 to 15 year olds that are accompanied by adults on a county highway? Because right now state law allows that to happen. So by having the ordinance written the way it is right now, you're precluding those people as well. How is that though? Between 12 and 15, they don't have valid driver's license. Yeah, but this says persons 16 years of age or older, so it does not talk about them, that age group. It's not specifying them. Why, why would we just say something like that 16 years of age or older, if they have it? driver's license, it must be, I don't know, the right word, clean. And or, the other problem we have is that when you're talking about driver's license, everybody just thinks driver's license. But as we thought, instructional permit is not a valid operator's license. The uh, probationary permit is not a, a driver's license. So those people in, in, in that category also don't fall under this. What if, what if we wrote it? Be, you know, that no person shall operate an ATV on county highway with uh, a driver's license that is suspended or revoked, right. something on that. Board. And that would be something that legal would have to say that we can do that. Yeah, or, or, be, or be eligible for a valid license. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's easy for you guys to check that out as well. Yes. Yeah, I mean, we can re, re get that line changed before it goes to legal, you know, to, uh, um, yeah, be eligible for driver's license. And then if they have a driver's license and they're pulled over and they had it suspended, then oh, well, okay. they're not. So then let, let's be sure too, though, that you're going to have two infractions then. First, that they have a suspended or revoked driver's license. And if their kids are with them, then they're in violation of doing that because they can't be on the road. Those kids can't be on the road then. Well, yeah, you rob a bank and shoot someone, you got two charges. <laughs> and that's, we write it where, you know, you're not penalizing the kids because the parents don't have a driver, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I do think that you should put those, though. I wouldn't have a problem if, if someone's like 12 to 15 or 12 to 16. I wouldn't have a problem if, if they've taken the required courses to have them on the highway. They're, they're not allowed unless they're accompanied, accompanied by yeah, adult, according just, to Wisconsin law. Yeah, but I'm just saying right now it just looks like they're not. But you could add that if they are accompanied by a parent with a valid driver's license, we should, we should add that one one line in there so that they're not, le they're legal actually. You know, that might, might that might be good because we post this on the internet and we get it out there and we try it, like when maps are created, that we get involved and, and put this stuff on there saying Tony ordinances say this, so it's right there when everybody can see it. When you write it like you're saying, it makes it easy for them to understand that. We could just put, uh, 12 to, you know, 12 to 15 year olds holding a valid um, APV license may operate on county highways in the presence of someone 16 or older or something. No, it's got to be 18 or older. Be eight, an adult with a, a yeah. valid driver's license that has not been suspended or reported. Yeah, but if we just something added that, a line, I think that would. Yeah, sure. As long as, like I said, legal says that. I've never seen it written like that anyway. I think it's a good thing to put that single file in there. Because yes, yeah, I was telling you last meeting, there was somebody, there was three ATVs riding the press, you know, and they covered the whole, well, there was like two and then one behind them. But, you know, I didn't realize. Does someone have to change the speed? Do they change the speed limit if it's posted? For ATV or no? There's got to be regulatory signs. So if it, if you want it to be different for an ATV, it's got to be a posted according to what the DOT you know, has on their site saying that we got to notify them that the ATV speed limit is different. We don't have to change the speed no. limit, but we can. Yes. Do we have a map right now that shows what uh, county highways are so open for ATVs in, in Africa? <laughs> there's only like two there's, sections. There's Three. two right now. County F for short distance and county DP for short distance. Yeah. What about M? M, 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 M is not. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying maybe we should start working yeah, on the map all open so that if oh, somebody man. does ask, you know, that we do have, you know, so we know. Sure. Yeah. No, and, and this does actually specify that right. the ordinance that the highway department has to have a map on file of that, which which we would because I, I think, you know, if stuff starts getting up, opened up the ATV routes, or ATV clubs are going to want to put out maps showing what is open or not open for, for the public view. Okay, so we'll get some wordage changed in that. All right. Sure. Uh, going on to the next, no person may operate or be a passenger on an ATV under 18 years of age without wearing protective headgear. And then uh, ATV operation shall be subject to all provisions of Wisconsin state statutes. Goes through them. Um, 
goes through some wordage on you know damaging signs and removing them. Um, gonna possess a trail sign. Then it goes into signage. Uh, the highway department shall have sole authority and responsibility for placement of signage on designated routes. County highways designated as ATV routes will be open when marked with appropriate signage. As a maintaining authority of the highways designated as routes, the department shall furnish, install, and maintain the proper signs and posts. Uh, the department is authorized to expend county funds and other county resources that are necessary to create, procure, place, maintain, repair. Uh, we've got to replace, well, no, re repair or replace ATV route signs and sign posts. Ashton, the highway commissioner is authorized to enter into, on behalf of Ashton County, contracts that provide for reimbursement of the costs incurred by the county for the purchase of ATV route signs. Now, just to be clear, and we want to make sure it's clear, the reimbursement is going to come from the clubs. It is not coming from the town. Okay. So, we, once we get this all set, we will talk to the clubs, and they already know it. Yeah. They have the funds to do it. Okay. But the towns aren't going to pay okay. for it. We'll have to look at that in the policy because it does talk about it again, and I think I did write the towns in there. Right. So and, we and, can we can look at that part of it. And that's right. fine. But the clubs have already said that they will reimburse once they you guys talk to them and say this is what it's going to cost sure is, is there any reason that the county when the county is saying that we're a recreation destination to get this stuff going that we're not putting up the signs ourselves and absorbing the cost and if we can get out of the clubs for the grant money that's out there then we get it because we're saying one thing but our actions aren't showing that that's what we want to do but the but my understanding is, you know, the club gives money from the ATV registrations for this sort of thing. Why not utilize that? And, and I'm not exactly sure how it all works, but some of the gist that I get is that they get a certain amount of money for like this, for snowmobiling. You know, for most of it just goes for doing the grooming and maintenance and, and taking care of that. Then they do a secondary, and I can't remember exactly what they call it, so they put in the time, they put in that they did these signs and that they did all this. That money is kind of like my grant where it's kind of prorated depending on however many people are putting in for it and they get a certain amount back. So if you ask for five grand, you may only get 2,500. Sure. Now, I'm not sure if they stay for signs and putting signs in that that automatically is not kind of in that group. It's just, they're going to take care of that. I don't know that. Push it. And I think, I think push comes to shove, I agree with you that I believe the clubs are gonna do whatever they can to, to get the money to put to it. But I also would like to say that the county is showing that they agree with getting this going because they know what kind of economic impact it has. Say, the team told me a week ago Tuesday that they had the money. Well, Obviously they will wanna know what the cost is. Sure. They have the money right now for F and N right. to be signed. They right. said they could help out with that. Right. Going further, I think they're going to do everything they can to, to help offset costs because they realize in order to get this, this would be one way in factor that we can get the signs you know, replaced. But I don't want to see it die just because if they can't get money for it, that the county isn't going to take care of it. Sure. I mean, this, this ordinance as written doesn't say that it has to come from there. Right. I mean, it authorizes basically myself or the department to do science, but then it also authorizes me to enter a contract with right. the mothers to to re get some of that back. Right. So I, I think it's okay. It's a little bit open. It's not. Well, I just don't want it to. Yeah. I don't want it to. You know, just not go any further because the county's going to say, "Yeah, we'll do all this, but we're not paying for the science." Sure. Well, if we're saying that, then we're sending the wrong message saying that we're a recreation destination because other counties are doing this. They're drawing people in. They're just going to bypass Ashton County if they can't get from A to B. And it's a little difficult sometimes to get from, and that's why we're looking at these routes, to get from the west side to the east side of Ashton County to go in you know, the, go other places and hit the businesses within that jurisdiction. So as yeah. long as it's, it's open and it's not going to make a route 
not happen because the phone is not going to take from the client. Can we just add a, a little line in there that any additional funding must be approved by the County Highway Department? Yeah, because I, I fully, I agree. I fully expect these costs to be bared by the club. But if we have a problem in a route or a, a road, mm -hmm. then we need to talk about it. Because our budget's going to be really bad this year. And rather than buy signs and not lay off somebody, or, you know, I mean, we're, we're going to be looking at stuff like Matt, that. Matt, what does it cost to put one of the, for the county highway sign, one sign? One sign? Depends on the sign, but they're probably average 30 to 50 for the sign. What's the post? 100 bucks. 100 bucks for a month. So say 20 bucks for a post, and then the labor do it, you know? So roughly 100? Probably 100 to 100. That's one of the, one of the bigger signs for the Just for the regular sign, sign, yeah. yeah. And, and luckily, you don't have to put as many signs up as you used to if you have a continual stretch. Yeah, if but we, if we do route, or I mean, full, like County M, we did just have one on each side, so right. it's going to be pretty minimal. Right. But I mean, once we get an estimate of how many signs and the club comes back and says, well, we can do it or we can't, we just, I agree with Bill, we just need to know, sure. you know, if the county's going to bear some big expense. Because hmm. everybody wants this stuff. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Uh, goes into enforcement. This ordinance shall be enforced by any officer employed by the Ashton County Sheriff's Department. Talks about violations. Um, my understanding, we'd have to come up with a uh, a list of what the fines and penalties will be for certain stuff, which I would need some help from from your end on that. And like I said before, I think Clark is looking at all of our ordinance collectively to get them codified and get some numbering system in here that works with all the different places that you know we have to input that number to be able to get it to go through courts. So when and if that's happening, I, you know, it all got put back because of when it started COVID. So, but there's still stuff we can do now. I mean, once we get it sure. dumped and we can put it into what we call a bond so that we know what you know, to write when we write the citation for it. Um, this talks about the severability of it, maintenance. Um, Let me ask this: if if you make a couple of changes on this order, do you have to meet again to review it before we send it to the full county board? Because I don't think so. If you, if you authorize, you know, if someone would make a motion. To accept it with with these few changes that were needed because we have a meeting on september 8th. Uh, 8th so this this would have to get to legal first you know depending on how long he's going to take you can ask Mark to uh you know he can expedite it so it could go to the 8th does it i'm not sure does it have to go anywhere else before it goes to the full county board you guys were changing some of that stuff recently i like to say it a year ago, I was told that the county board didn't want anything to do with this, that they authorized yeah. us to do it. But yeah. being it's an ordinance, I don't have a problem with pushing it. But I will say this, I'm getting emails every other day from the town board asking, where are your packages? Yeah. And so the sooner we figure out what we're going to do, because this whole thing's going to take time. By the time we approve this, sign it. Well, let me ask you this, and is based on, can you make a motion to... I mean, what are your thoughts right now about what road you're going to open up? You want my opinion? Well, I'm just asking. That's an end for what, sure. Because the town boards have all asked for that. See, I have no idea. But yeah, I'm not excluding them. But the county F and county M have been requested by three town boards. And C, C has been by town of Marengo. Right. Well, and I know that the rest of them there should be something in here though that that uh, that the local government of town would be consulted or get some kind of blessing from them but 
that you grow. We, I know um, we talked about that before. So we can, I don't know that the ordinance needs to say that, that, that puts that on to, into the policy. Okay. You know, because the, the ordinance gives the highway department or the highway committee, I'm sorry, you know, to, to put up together a policy, which that's what we'll talk about next. And that's where that would belong. But, um, well, can the committee as a whole today say based on it, you know, once the ordinance is saw by legal passed that all the county roads are open? No. You that's, not gonna, that today? that's not going to happen. All county roads are not going to get open. I will jump up off this roof. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Next, no, the, I mean this. This is goes to the policy, and then the policy we have to go through the application process. This this committee wants to retain that to go the next, that process. The next county board meeting was, was scheduled for September eighth, and then October sixth. Okay, that's what they they had talked about. But sure. if if we were to make the motion to approve the ordinance with the changes we talked about, yes. and you guys sending it on. To Court Council or Clark, yeah, and asking them to proceed as quickly as they can, yes, with a possibility to get it on the ace, and if they can, go to the we don't understand. Yeah, yeah. sure. That's, uh, what we were talking about before too, is as far as the funding for the science we were talking about, the, that also could probably be part of the application process rather than the ordinance. I mean, that's what sure. Yep. Yeah, this, this, the ordinance just gives that I could buy the signs, but I can also go, you know, make a contract with the club for them to purchase signs. Too. Yeah, they could, they could, it, yeah, they could say in their application, they'll still have the money to purchase the sign. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, that, so this is everybody motion of education, or if we need a motion with the changes that we talked to Matt about. Is there a motion to push Mo this? Motion to proceed with changes as discussed. Okay, I'll, I'll second. Okay. Any other discussion? Yes, but no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but no. <laughs> well, we, we can add in there, no provided no we get legal counsel. Right. We, if we okay. added that in there. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have a Motion and a second to approve the ordinance with the changes we discussed pending legal approval. And we will just request that Matt try to see if council and, and Clark would move it to the September 8th order. Wow. Okay. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. So now we need to move to the policy. That's back a couple pages. Ah, you want to look through it. So um, a tax application form must be completed by APD's Trail Association, town, village, or municipality, forward to the highway committee for consideration. For a county highway to become an ATV row. So, do you want to leave that that any of them can can put an application? ATV club, town, village, municipality. And that basically gives the city. Anybody can ask for. You know, to, to put the application forward. Right. The only thing that we might want to catch that at is if the club comes and says, hey, I want to open county Z, we would want the town board's blessing. Yeah. Okay. Like we did in these other three. Uh, because, you know, somebody yeah. might request something open in the town board or the town folks may not even be in agreement. So, so basically, Adeline, if the application comes from an ATV Trail Association, right, it must first be brought to, or or be if the if an ATV the Trail local Association comes for an application, approval. they should have an accompanying letter from the town board. Okay. Yeah. Or local, or, or local 
court. Are you precluding an individual from asking to have something open? Because I believe that's what it's not allowing me as an individual to come forward and ask to have a rope open. But you'd have to go through the town anyway. Yeah. You? We would, I could get there approved. Yeah, I, I, I mean, that's the intent of it, I guess, is to, that it has to go through a club or a town or a city village, not not on an individual basis. If it didn't come through a club, then who would pay for it? Yeah, the private individual isn't going to pay for it, right? Yep. Um, so then we went into the criteria we, we before that you know if you remember the criteria basically you couldn't open a highway for hardly any reason only to short stretches so you know it's basically has a route application been submitted it's been filled out with sufficient detail uh, any route or alternatives have they been investigated um, does it connect segments of ATV roads or networks Length of segment, uh, posted speed limit, vertical or horizontal safety concerns, pavement width, just general safety concerns, and then has the route been approved by the sheriff's department. So it, it's pretty broad. I mean, to look at them, you know, it doesn't it doesn't say they have to meet any particular um, of this criteria, but that they should be at least looked at. Then it goes into the signage again. The department shall have sole authority and responsibility for placement of signage on the designated routes. Um, that they're open when marked. The department shall furnish, install, and maintain the proper sign and posts. Um, kind of copies of verbiage from the ordinance. The highway department is authorized to expend county funds to create, repair, place, or maintain, repair the route signs. And then there again, the highway commissioner is authorized to enter on behalf of the county a contract that provides for reimbursement of the costs incurred by the county for purchase of ATV routes and signs. Are there any questions so far? Uh, the ATV Trails Association Town Village or Municipal Government that submitted the application may be required to reimburse the County Highway Department for all costs associated with required roadway maintenance or damage repair, such as gravel shoulder maintenance caused by ATV use. That's put that in there. Is it something you guys are interested in or not? Well, just and, and again. The ATV Trails submits the application and has an accompanying letter from the town. The town's not responsible for those costs. It's sure. the application from the Trails the, Association. The Trails Association. The, yeah. the towns are just saying yes, we want. It. Yeah. You know, I, I I just I don't see us going after someone for one little spin out here and there. But I mean, if there's a huge damage happening over and over, then we would have some something to go back on. Uh, someone was discussing this, is that if, and I don't know if we can, this would be something for legal again, and what you guys are thinking, but something in the ordinance, along with what we're saying in the policy, that say I catch you, you're out there doing that, you, you're the one that wrecked this part of the road or this, that, and the other thing, is, is will a county ordinance, if I issue him a ticket to damage to an ATV road, a forfeiture civil violation. I just wanted to see if, if we could put something in the ordinance that he would be then responsible. And I don't know if we can do that for sure through an ordinance. And that might be something that we want to discuss with them because if I charge them criminally, well, then you can go and recoup the cost as part of a condition, you know, a plea agreement or whatnot. Sure. But if it's something that we can tack on, to say that if we you know, find him and he's found, he's found guilty of that, that he then has to pay, you know, for the damage that was caused to him. That's just something, you know, if you throw that out there, then at least then we can help defer the cost if we catch the person that did it. Sure.
could that go into that that B schedule that needs to be I, put I, up? I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Yeah. I think that's something that's separate. And I'm not sure that you can do it with a county ordinance like citation. Sure. But it's something to ask legal that maybe, maybe there's something out there that they can then, you know, to request the court to, to take care of that. I don't know that for sure. Okay. Does this policy have to be published any place? Because it says here the policy shall become effective upon passage by the Ashland County Highway Committee. Mm -hmm. I think it should be because then it's just like the ordinance, people can read it. They know that what they have to do is fill it out. They know what to bring to the township when they go there to request that road to be open. Sure. Could we just send this to all the uh, uh, townships and ATV clubs? I think by posting it online, though. Yeah, it's well, we could do that website. too. We could put it on the county website. Yeah, yeah. but we could, we could do that too, but to just be assured that everybody gets well, it. I can, I'll can. i put it into all my email. I mean, this I got a running email that I keep putting the necessary information so that they have it every time I send it out. So once and if this ordinance, I will put with every email that I send to the township initially, because I'm planning on doing it once a year so that they follow up with the ordinances. And then they can have, you know, they'll have that information in there. They'll have the ordinance for the Ashton County and they'll have this policy from Ashton County. It'll just be in the email. Do you have, when you do do that, um, like, like it, if this is what it's approved, I can put it on the website and then you just link it to that website so that way, if we make any changes, like if we're looking at a link, we don't have old versions to nothing. Short answer is yeah, I think you can do that, but I have to try because I don't. Like I can, I can email you the, the links to right. use, I guess, and, and that's what I would. I don't. Rather. Can I can I put that can I put that into an email and tell them what link to follow? I, I yeah. guess I've never. I'll, done that. I'll send it to you like that, and then you could just okay. forward, you know, forward yeah. that or copy and yeah. paste it, and yeah. I would still do it. Yeah. And then the same thing with the the sheriff's department, you know, Facebook, and yep. you know, we can just put it on. And because I usually share that with like Dave and Taylor. Yep. Um, or if I have something I would ask, now that we have a Facebook page, yeah. you know, like, can you go share this? And so um, we try to, that's our main policy with the communications is like trying to link it to our website so that way we can make changes. There's not old posts out there. Right. Um, but yeah, that would be great. Yep. I can send that to you and we can put it up there. All right. Uh, the next paragraph was in there before. It's just saying that if, if something happens, situation develops, the highway commissioner shall have the authority to temporarily suspend or close the route, subject to review and determination by the committee. So that would give give us, you know, if we see something happening, we can close it down, come back to you guys and say, hey, look. Um, so that's basic policy. Does anybody have any other? Additions or subtractions you're interested in? Can, can we adopt this policy before the ordinance? Uh, yeah, because I think, that, I mean, the, the current ordinance calls for the highway department to have a policy, right? So, yes, I, it, I think so. Okay, so, so the only thing that, from what the feed I got here that, was, that I've added on here that we talked about was that we would have as part of the application a local government approval. Yes. Okay. Question. Who decides the state and the federal or the, the federal or state highways? Who gives authority over that? And, and would they ever give something? They would never give authority for ATV, would they? On state highway, yeah. They state actually have. Federal? State, they have in they, Lake. Down in Clam Lake, they opened up a section. Yeah, uh, but, but who's the one that gives the authority on that? The, the DOT. The authority. The, the DOT? DOT? Yes. Okay. What happened there was the governor was up for a fishing opener and cable. Some people from Clam Lake nailed his butt, and I opposed it, but he authorized the DOT to open that short section up from 195 to Clam Lake. Um, <laughs> I, I never heard of it before, but apparently political pressure works. <laughs> they come off of 195 I see that, that it's... and head into Clam Lake. It, it's, there's no way a truck coming around that corner can see those ATVs. It, it's the worst spot they could have put. 
And now the, the, the ATVs are ignoring that. They're running all the way back towards Blitton. I meet them every day. I meet them every day on GG, just south of Little Clam Lake, heading into Clam Lake on GG because they can't read the sign that says, turn this way, but they keep going for miles. But, you know, that. Uh, like Are you seeing specific times, specific days? Well, on Saturday, when I headed down, it was probably about 2 o'clock on Saturday. There were UTVs coming. They were south of Little Clam, heading to Clam Lake. But again, you and I talked. You could sit there for the next few days and not see anybody. And tomorrow, the day after, there, <laughs> they seem to have a sense of when they can get away with it. But anyway, so um, does anybody other than that local government approval any other ideas? Otherwise, we could take a motion. I'll I'll, I'll move. For adoption with that amendment with the local officials. Okay. Okay. Can you can okay. you add that the the policy will be signed at the next meeting because we'll have to make these changes and you know it, it's right now it's just printed in a draft form so we don't have a. Okay. Uh, if, I'll add that. If you can add that to your motion, that will be okay. going into place today, but signed signed at the next. Meeting. Okay. Marty seconds it. Any okay. other discussion? All those face in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Emmer would say no. <laughs> <laughs> he would. Well, this doesn't would. give this doesn't give any authority to open any. Uh, the, the highway department still has the authority to to open it. They have to request it. We don't have to grant. That's true. Right. You know, like yeah. I, I would have a hard time granting GG. I just <laughs> let's see where draft budget. All right. So in your packet. Thank you, guys. See you later. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you, Thanks, Bruce. Uh, so we put together our our. Clark is on. Oh, Clark is on. Oh, Clark is here now. Clark, Clark. Oh, Clark, Clark. Okay. You had that lovely stuff that we just put around. So we put together our, our draft budget, bring forward, sorry, I didn't have it ready last week too. So you had it in your, your packet that we sent, sent home to you. But we can go through it. Um, we started on the first line, the, the local transates, that we left the same as last year. You know, we don't know that could go up or down, probably not up, but. Um, so we left it the same. We have not gotten any indication where that will go. Uh, the local road improvement state, that's what we get, that 4100 for administering the LRIP program. It's like a Disney shop that check, it's 3900 this year. So it fluctuates oh. like a couple hundred dollars. Sure. Um, Non-metallic mining revenue, that brings in about $7,700 to the department every year. Uh, state Highway DMA revenues, uh, $5,000. That, that number, we don't know. I mean, they could add, they could give me something tomorrow. We just don't know. Um, the RMA, that's pretty well set, and, and that's been indicated that it should be staying the same. So that would be that next two lines the RMA revenue and the winter revenue, that $557,700, and then the $430,000. I, I think them are pretty solid numbers. Uh, the PBM revenue, that's kind of extra projects that the state gives us also. We got we got about 42,000 this year, I think. And it was indicated that it was going to stay in the ballpark again next year from the DOT. Uh, township revenues, we put at 200,000. That we had at 300 last year. Um, it's, it's hard to say. I, just guesstimating, I think we're going to be under that 300 this year, so we, we, we've knocked that number down a little bit. Uh, the county department revenues, that's work we do for other departments. Uh, last year that was a little higher. We knew about that uh, $50,000 DNR grant through Forest Street, so you know, we do some work for the courthouse and 
sheriff's department and different departments through the years. So we're estimating that at 20,000. Uh, that private entity revenue, we leave that at 5,000 every year. Uh, sale of salvage materials, that's like old culverts and, and that sort of thing, possibly. We add a $5,000 in for that. Matt, what would be an example of a private entity revenue? Um, like our self sand sales to Bad River Tribe. Okay. That's mainly most of it. Um, because you know, we don't do a private party for a private entity. We can't sell for private, really, but. Um, the, but to certain ones, we kind of have tax exempt or like for. Like, we did something for MMC for COVID, so it's yeah. not small, small, but that's where that would go to. Mainly that 5,000 is usually sell sand sales to them. And then the last line of that, that's uh, county budget from the general fund. We left that, that was what we got out of the general fund last year. So we left that number the same in, the, in this budget. So then we move into expenses. Question? Yes. The total income, how does that compare to last year then? Um, it's pretty close because we had it at like uh, two point to put last year's right on here. I apologize if it's I think we had it at 2.4 or 2.5 last year. So the hundred thousand dollars is the only one that was really less. Yeah, yeah. That that town number is the one that's okay that we went less on. You know, typically when you're looking at a budget, and I'm sure we've all seen this even on the county board, you have a column there from last year, this year, sure. like even when you do town board budgets. Sure. Yeah, so, that's so what I match. Or all we got. Yep. That's the same. Mm -hmm. That's what I just apologize for. I just realized I forgot to keep that last year's on there. So, yeah. but I can send that to you. <clears throat> Maybe if you want, you could probably run and print it out in about two minutes. <laughs> Possibly, if you want to see that. Well, I think you explained it well enough to satisfy me. Sure. You it's, know it's very, very similar. Like a lot right. of those numbers we use the same besides like there's a few numbers we talked about that we changed. Um, because we kind of, yeah, I mean, kept it, averaged it over the last years and kept a lot of the stuff the same as last year. So we go into expenses, uh, administration, 30,200, uh, patrol superintendent, 17, 695, 16. Uh, radio, that's for the radios and all of our trucks that we can talk to each other, $5,700.66. Uh, GPL insurance expense, $17,000. Uh, labor, which is the big one, that's at $1.372,500. That is, that is down just a little over last year. Uh, we do not we're not predicting any retirement payouts for next year. Last Something, year we had three that we Yeah, we had, had three budgeted for this this year. So um, that that number is down like 50,000 50, approximately. Yeah, just under like 40,000 more. Uh, field small tools, 18,000. Shop operations is $38,019. Fuel handling expense, two fifty. dollars uh, Machinery operations expense, $350,000. Uh, buildings and grounds is $100,000. Uh, county highway expenses, $100,000. County winter expenses, $60,000. State highway winter expenses, $75,000. State highway maintenance expenses, $82,189. Uh, State Highway Road and Bridge construction, forty thousand. Uh, PBM projects, uh, fifteen thousand. Township expense, sixty thousand. County department expense, ten thousand. That private entity, entity expense, five thousand. And then for equipment budgeted would be fifty-five thousand. Well, what is this township expenses? What is that? So, so up above in the revenue, we have we have township revenues of two hundred. The expense is sixty thousand. That be so like gravel or culverts. The labor goes up into that labor dollar. You know, from that two hundred, that goes into the labor. The two hundred thousand minus minus 
okay. the sixty thousand for culverts, gravel, whatever okay. we buy for the projects, okay. and then labor. The rest would be labor go into the labor category. Okay. Yep. And that's the same with the county department expenses, um, and the, and and even the state, you know, the state highway, the winter, the county highways winter expenses. That that's for materials. Um, the labor from from up above goes into the labor expense line um, and then equipment budgeted would be 55,000 that 55,000 is our general if we go from the same as last year the county borrows the 350,000 for our equipment purchases um, we'll see it get to it on the next page my equipment purchases for next year are um, um, predicted to be 405,000. So if we kept that borrowing at the same 350, there would be $55,000, you know, that would come back into the, the budget. That'd hey, Matt, that hey, Matt can, yes. can, can, you, can you move the screen? I can't on the online screen, you're not keeping up. Yeah, thank you. Sorry about that. So that would be one thing for, for the board and Clark to consider if you wanted to to move that that fifty five thousand dollars into the borrowed borrow four hundred and five instead of um, the three fifty, you could you could knock our 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 general fund balance down by that fifty five thousand. That'd be an that, option. How does uh, the total expenses compare to last year? Uh, almost a very very similar. We were at like. 2.493 or something like that. So, so it's down a little? Down a little. Very little. Yeah. Forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. Yep. I mean, yeah. It's, it's... We, we dropped that 50000 off that labor. And, and then some of these, you know, when we went down on the town revenue, we also went down on the expense. So do, do we have, what happens if we have money left over? Does it go into the general fund or what happens to it? It stays in the highway fund. So, so that's the difference between in our budget between the expenses is at two point you know two million four hundred fifty one thousand five hundred fifty six, and our income is at two million three hundred and one thousand four eighty. So we got a we got a difference of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars seventy five one fifty seventy five and ninety seven cents. That would come out of our existing cash balance on hand. That we have left over from this year, which we generally run, you know, four or five hundred left in our checkbook at the end of the year. Just stuff is we haven't got paid out yet from the state. You know, I mean, you know, our December money doesn't come in till February, so we always have a, a checkbook balance. That that difference would come out of our existing cash balance. Any questions on this page? I'm a new guy in the block here, sure. but uh, what we're talking about maybe sometimes you might have some money left over mm -hmm. and you just keep that in the, in the, in the budget. Yes. Not in the budget, but in the checkbook. In the checkbook. <clears throat> I noticed that we don't have an equipment pool account. Improvement? In equipment pool. Oh, so, so that equipment pool. You know, whenever you need equipment, obviously, uh, sometimes you need more equipment than others. As a matter of fact, just recently here, uh, you, uh, what do you call it, uh, or Emmer had uh, did a uh, whole shake up. Uh, you, uh, you had like 30 some patrol trucks. Now we're down to what, 12 or 13 patrol trucks. I mean, so, that's, so a lot of these trucks are doing double duty. That's been going down for years, yeah, at the moment. Well, but the thing that. is, uh, you know, so sometimes we have a need for a capital. Expenditure like a new excavator, skid sure. um, is not capital, but, but some bigger pieces of equipment. And uh, when I sat on a town board over at the town of Sanders and stuff like that, we developed an equipment pool account so that <clears throat> when we got the uh, and load of backhoe, or now just the recently they bought themselves a motor grader, they had some money set aside in that equipment pool account to trade in with their equipment pool. They didn't. They did not have to borrow the whole sure. couple hundred thousand dollars. You had some place to draw from. Sure. 
and, and we do have that on our improvement end. Um, you know, we have we have money in the bank for new pavement, um, which we, we will talk about on the, the next page. But yeah, I mean, there is the problem with the department is, is we have to keep a certain amount of cash on hand because sometimes, you know, the bills come in and the state and some of these towns don't pay us for a while. So we can't run the zero cash balance or, you know, right at it, you know, we'll get trouble. We might not have the money to pay the bills at the time. So we, we like to keep that kind of that, that the money buffer. rolling from year to year to be able to, to pay the bills as needed when, when needed. And, and also too, like we were just talking a little bit about the enterprise fund, like we can't predict that like we're going off of like numbers from like all average over the last like five or six years. And in those years, our numbers can change by hundreds of thousand dollars, whether it's winter or summer, we have a storm, um, you know, a bad summer storm, and we also we got to do a lot of flood damage that we didn't plan for. Well, then some of the stuff that's changed to that, and you need to have, you know, well, last year we had a really good year, we got more money. Well, then the next year we had a really bad winter, and ended up going to winter and stuff. So over the years, it all averages out to this, but when I, like, I can, I can show you this too, some years will be super, you know, high in winter maintenance and really low in, in summer maintenance and then vice versa the other way around depending on the time of years. So, and even like the overtime. You don't want to get hit with a, a bad winter and then not another 2016 flood. Yeah. We don't want that. No. Has it Clark viewed this budget? He has not yet. No, we, we have until Thursday the 20th, I think, to submit it. Okay. So it, it's coming to you guys first for kind of a, a, you know, a rough approval, and then it will go to Clark and on down to finance and, and through the through the channels. But yeah, he has not seen this yet, no. Yeah, this is, one of the things I would recommend is we would move the $55,000 of equipment budget, which is in the, coming off basically a general levy of the $598,000 of county, county general levy. We're anticipating that, uh, due to decreased forest revenue, we're going to have to cut our uh, overall operating ex operating budget for the county, maybe around $300,000 this year, because uh, we're not gonna have the timber revenue due to Versal. So, uh, and so that, that means we either have to borrow for capital items that had been general levy, or we have to look at employee furloughs or laying off staff in order to balance the budget because uh, practices dictate that we can't develop a county budget and use cash reserves to fill in for operational expenditures because that's just, you know, you're eating your seed corn if you do that. So that would be my recommendation on this first page. Okay. Uh, and we're, we're going to be taking this to finance committee on the 27th. Um, you know, um, you know, the finance committee will have to make a recommendation to the county board um, concerning, you know, increasing debt. And so they have to increase taxes in order to do this, in order to make this budget balance because of the decreased timber revenue, which is not general levy. So in order to balance it, we're going to have to increase taxes and that'll have to be a recommendation or the county board will have to override a recommendation from the finance committee if they don't want to do that. All right, so we'll move to the second page, um, equipment purchases for the 21 budget. So we have a plow truck, triaxle plow truck, that's estimated at 240,000. Uh, a patching trailer, which is for patching potholes, the trailer, that's estimated at 50,000. Uh, track skid steer at 90,000, and a pickup truck for 25,000. So that, so that comes to a balance of $405,000 budgeted for, for them items. Then we move on down to the uh, 21 improvement fund balance. So we're predicting our improvement fund balance to be uh, $1,669,216 on 
January 1 of 21, um, we would be getting uh, improvement fund deposit of $620,000. That would be also borrowed money. And Clark indicated to me that we've been at the 520 for, for quite some years. We did a, a five-year plan and we come up about $500,000 short. So Clark indicated we should bump that up $100,000 a year to, to uh, make up for that shortfall. <laughs> yep, and, and Matt, Matt, one of the yep. things I didn't get a chance to talk to you about this. I'm basically, I'm getting questions from the Department of Revenue concerning can we take that extra hundred thousand dollars and put it in a obviously a designated fund for four years or five years to get an extra five hundred out of it. They're opining on that. Their initial response is that may not be applicable. I don't. I don't think we would need to, Clark. Um, you know, we we would be spending more than that six twenty every year. It'll yep. just leave, up, leave our improvement balance higher. You know, the money we already have. Okay, so basically, well, it's the same effect. Basically, so instead yeah. of taking out of operating reserves, you're basically putting in an extra hundred, and you get to year five here, year four, you're not going to be four hundred thousand dollars in the hole because you borrowed an extra hundred thousand dollars. Okay, it's basically the same effect. Okay, yeah. that that makes sense to me. Yeah, we, we would we would we wouldn't be putting any in the bank. So uh, the next line is a revolving loan grant fund. It looks like I we're working on the paperwork on that now for four hundred thousand. Um, and then uh, LRIP funding for County Highway GG is about two hundred and ninety one thousand. Uh, and then a a million dollar flap grant. So then. The county GG project is 13 some miles, is estimated at 1.95 million, and that, and then the county end project would be the 400,000. So the county end would be that revolving loan fund would come out of that, would match up with that. Then the GG project would is 1.95 minus the 1 million dollar flat grant, and the $291,000 LRIP funding. So then that would leave us at the end of the year, our improvement fund balance would be $1,630,216. Okay, Matt, I, I, I have a question on the difference between County Road N and County GG. Um, the only reason I say this is our uh, revolving loan fund grant of $400,000, uh, one of the, um, one of the businesses is looking at paying off their balance, which would make our balance in the bank maybe 450 or 470. Okay. All right. Um, if they pay that off, we're going to have more than 400. If your project road in is only 400, then you have another 70,000. We'd have to think about where do we put that? Um, the other question, the other thing we could just do is say, we just apply the revolving loan fund, to the county road GG instead of county road N. I mean, it's it's a distinction without a difference, but sure. it basically doesn't leave you any extra money because instead of because county road N, you're saying that's really only going to cost four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, that's about there. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. so if we so if we get four seventy because this company pays it off, and we're not going to have that number till the till December thirty first, sure. basically that, and they're they're we're going to make the application, but. I think it might provide more flexibility. The only thing for County Road GG is we would have to maybe reach out to the state um, to make sure that County Road GG still qualifies for the low to moderate income neighborhood that County Road N does. Okay. And yeah. I, I, yeah, I would I would guess it does. Um, the, I'd have to look at that on GG. For next year's project, it's it's broken into two pieces. So uh, the one piece, about nine miles, that that will be with the flat grant. Um, that's, I think, eighty twenty. You know, we we have to pay a certain percentage of that. And okay. if, if if we can use these funds in conjunction with that flat grant, I'd have to find that out. As far as the other portion of the we have LRIP dollars for that. And 
LRIP does not allow other funding sources to be used together with it. So it, it that would not work for that section. Okay. But that isn't to say, you know, I can't find uh, a section of North GP that we should work on to spend the remainder of them funds. I, th that's not a problem. I, I, I believe we can do that. Okay. All right. So that's that's the budget as presented in the draft form. Um, any other questions? I guess. Or? Well, with being this as a draft, do you still want us to approve the draft budget? I I think so. I think I think uh, you know if you can give me an approval of of the budget as drafted to send send on to you know Clark and onto the finance committee. And, and and the only the only reason I would say you probably want to do this is because what we're actually asking the highway committee to look at is increasing we're basically asking the increase the debt levy for county citizens by two hundred and fifty five thousand dollars. So one hundred and fifty five. Well no, if you're you're going up a hundred for your fund improvement. Yeah. Right? And 55 for equipment. 55 for equipment. Okay, you're right. Okay, 155. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Motion to adopt this draft resolution as presented. Please by Mike. I'll second it. Second by Ray. Discussion? What about this? Is That isn't how it's presented. They got the 55 going into the debt levy. Okay, so I think that needs to be pointed out that that fifty-five thousand goes into the debt levy. Sure, and that would be that would be the change other than being presented. Yep, right? and then we would then we would decrease we would decrease the general levy going to the highway department by the same fifty-five. Sure, and that would that would help us balance the budget. Sure, yeah, so I think that's what it is. A wash or well. I think that's what it needs to be amended to show that that fifty-five thousand isn't in the budget because they're borrowing the money. Correct. Correct. Is that acceptable, Mike? Yes. Okay. Great. I'll second it. Yep. Okay. Any <clears throat> other discussion? Thank you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Thank you. Hello. No, we got okay. we got number eight. Oh, it's actually, I'm still using the old. <laughs> that that was <laughs> that was written wrong instead of said Tyler Street. Oh, Tyler okay. Street, yes. So, so in Mellon, Tyler Street, which is basically the main street through town, there is a bridge over the Bad River. That bridge is qualified for federal funding, so we need to start the. Um, the consultant selection for the design of this bridge. And being that it's kind of, it's a county sponsored bridge, I, 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 I'm a little bit off on this. I mean, we're, our name is on their paperwork. It's still the, the city's financial responsibility to meet the, you know, the 80-20. So we need to create a, a, a committee of, here to, we have to go through the, what the QBS, the quality based selection process for consultants. So there needs to be, we have to send out at least three requests for proposals to three different consultants. They need to come in and give us, do a presentation on their, their entity. And then uh, the committee will select the consultant they feel is best suited for the project. Uh, the state did recommend that we have at least one committee member from the city of Mellon because it's in their city and the committee has to be a minimum of three people. So we would need uh, Joe Barabee asked to be sit on the committee and then two members of, of the highway committee and then we'll have to um, I'll have to send out the request for proposals and we'll set a date for them to give a presentation to 
the committee has, has selected. But that uh, Tyler Street Bridge, that's on State Highway 13. No, that's on Tyler Street of the City of Mellon. It's, okay, that's go, not, main that's street, not the main street. Past the post office, okay. the library. That's that that's Tyler Street. So it's, it's right by John Tiger's own home. Yeah. Well, why why are we involved then? Yeah. We're I I asked that. I mean, I I asked the state. I said, so the city needs to put together a committee, and the county's named as kind of the sponsor through the whole bridge program. We're that that we're in charge of all the bridges for the county. I mean, it's their financial responsibility, but we still have charge of the bridges. So it's 80, 20, so the city is gonna pay the 20. The city will pay the 20, yes. Yep. I, I would be on that committee. So Marty would be one? Yeah, you guys have to select a minimum of two, and you can you can do more. So I'll be. <laughs> Let me see what my words did. Well, I, I guess I could be. I, I think Mike should be, because Mike's got, uh, he's familiar with bridges and stuff, right? I could be, okay. That Mike Marty and Bill Barabee from the City of Mellon would be okay. on I'll, I'll on the test committee. I will second. I'll second by Bill. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Next meeting date. Yeah. Would it normally be the 14th? It would be oh, yes. September 14th would be the normal date. That that works for me. So that works for everybody else. 14th Monday the nice looking, right? I'm good. September I, I, I would also I also when you're planning your year long, as we're cutting back other county expenses, we're asking all the committees, some committees only meet six times a year. I'm basically asking committees to either meet between six and nine times a year because we, unless it's absolutely necessary, we're trying to save a little bit of money. I don't know if you guys meet 12 times a year or not, but uh, keep that in your mindset, which meetings you don't need to set policy on, and you can just do updates via email, so. Yeah, this, this and you can look September for the future month. September will wanna meet if the county board takes up their short. Sure, then, then we'd have to look at the request of N and F at that September meeting. Yeah, I'm thinking about 21. As you think about 21 meetings during 2021, we're okay. trying to we're going to try to budget only for nine meetings uh, as a maximum, and we'd like to get down to six if we could. So. Good. Well, right. Okay, so the 14th works for everybody. Ten to the nine, nine a.m. Okay, and then if anybody has items for the next agenda, I'll just call Matt or Andrew. Yeah. Bernie will be talking ATV. Is there anything else? Yeah, presumably David will be setting up something up. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. I, I made a note on it. And I'm certainly following it. I have a question. Um, there's a bunch of dead trees on Highway 13 okay. that are a little ways back and they're kind of standing like the elm. Uh, I don't know if they're in the right of way. Are those going to be cut? I guess I'm not sure exactly where you're referring to. Well, if but you go all the way along, you see a bunch of dead elm. You know, it, yeah. Lots of that. We we try to go through periodically and, and see if anything is going to hit the right or hit the road anyway. Okay, and take them out. Um, and and sometimes it does vary with right away. Generally on thirteen we have enough right away. There's a few spots that are fifty feet. Most of them are wider than that. Okay, so, but there's a certain time of the year when you do that. Yeah, we kind of spring and fall when okay. we you know if it gets wet or different times we can't do other work. We go through and, and check that. Okay. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll second it.
second by everybody. Aye. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thanks, Clark. You know, like okay. you know, who's going to inform us with regards to this bridge thing? No.